In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this stamp box for your clay. You can keep it in there indefinitely, keep it workable in there indefinitely. Or you can also use a damp box to dry clay out slowly if it's clay that needs to be dried out slowly so it doesn't crack. So, without further ado, I'm going to get on with it. So the first thing that you want to do is, well, first of all, choose a box that suits your needs. I like this one, this style, because it's quite deep. So it, we're going to fill it with about... Um, an inch and a half of plaster and once it's got an inch and a half pl of, pl of plaster in it there is going to be quite a lot of space for relatively uh, tall pieces of work to go in there. So the first thing that you want to do is <clears throat> put a very thin coat of Vaseline or any kind of release agent. <clears throat> I'm just using Vaseline because it's easy. Um, th very thin layer of Vaseline on the inside. There we go. And then you want to put in, basically you're putting in the, um, I'm going to put about an inch just over an inch worth of water in there because the plaster once you've added the plaster it will raise the level a little bit but not very much so I'll put between uh, probably about one and a half inches in there so I'll be back in a moment right so there's about an inch and a half I'm going to measure it which is probably a bit extreme but um, sometimes I find it a bit difficult to gauge things by eye and uh, it's a good idea not to have the plaster too thick because if you have it too thick it's very heavy um, but if it's too thin then it, there's a danger that it's going to break uh, when you're lifting the box around afterwards so and that's exactly an inch and a half now so what you want to do is transfer the water into a mixing bucket Transfer the water into a mixing bucket <clears throat> and then you need to put some gloves on and also a respirator mask as well because we're going to be handling plaster and uh, it's good not to inhale the plaster so I'm going to put this on, it might make me sound a bit like Darth Vader. And then you sprinkle the plaster into the water Sprinkling it around, rather than just dumping it in, in a big lump, if you sprinkle it in, then it gives it more, ch it gives the, the water will absorb, um, the plaster will absorb more water as it's going in. So you sprinkle it in until you get plaster islands forming and then once you've got the plaster islands forming you mix the plaster with your hands quite gently. Some people say that um, you can use a drill with a mixing bit on the end. Um, I wouldn't recommend that because you just get lots of lots of air bubbles in the plaster which weakens it. Nice and thick. using a jug transfer it in the corner of your container transfer the plaster that's going off quite quickly 
Um, I used <clears throat> room temperature water. If you use warm water, it'll go off really quickly. Uh, and if you use cold water, it can take quite a long time. So I use sort of temperature, room, room, room temperature, which works quite well. Now I am going to quickly go and rinse that bucket so before it sets and I use a bucket. So before you do that, just tap, tap the side and actually what you can do, this is another thing that I do, put another glove on. <clears throat> Not everyone recommends this, but this is what I do. I sort of put my hand in and gently shuggle it. I call it shuggling it. You sort of gently vibrate the hand. It's a, if there's any, it releases trapped air bubbles if you do that. There you go. And then what you can do is if you spritz it, well, this is uh, just rubbing alcohol, which you can buy from a chemist. Spritz it. There you go. A little bit. And it gets rid of any air bubbles on the surface. It breaks up the tension, the surface tension there. Right. So I've left this for about an hour now still feels warm solid but it still feels quite warm so I think we're okay to give it a go let's try it anyway it might be a little early but we'll try anyway Careful not to damage it. So, just put some cloths on here to rest it on so that it doesn't crumble. And then, just very gently with a little rasp, oops, oh, there you go, there's a little crumble. and sand it down. And sand it off on a piece of paper, a sanding paper. and I'm going to scrub it down. Just use an ordinary domestic scrubber. Flakes of plaster that have dripped on the side, you can wipe them off so that they don't fall into your clay pieces.
plaster gently back in the box. I recommend doing it quite carefully because the last thing that you want to do is for the plaster to break at this point. Give it a bit of a push down because there's a bit of air in the bottom there. Right, and then you have your fantastic damp box which will last you a very long time if you'd like it to and then you can put the lid on and when you put the lid on if it's an airtight lid the clay will keep for a very long time and what you want to do to before you put your clay in there um, you just douse it with water so that it absorbs into the clay not so that it's swimming in water on top. If there's excess water on the top, you can wipe it off, but just so that it's absorbed into the clay. And then put your lid on, and voila. Now, there is, um, I have got a printed, um, if you want a checklist to do this, you can print this off from my website, which is thepotterywheel.com. So you can print this off at thepotterywheel.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you can download it. And it's handy to have this. If you're working with plaster, it's always a very good idea to have a checklist too on side, because when you're working with plaster, you know, you, time is of the essence and it's easy to forget important stages. Uh, so yeah, have a checklist there and then you can just work through it and you know you're not going to be missing anything crucial.